something seems to be going on on this mysterious continent at the South Pole. The whole crew saw a whole bunch of silver darting objects, and they are round. Did you know there have been claims of around a dozen UFO sightings per month in the remote and icy expanses of Antarctica? Stories from soldiers and informants speak of strange buildings and events that can't be explained. A one-time Navy flight engineer based in Antarctica shared his experience of seeing UFOs doing things beyond what humans can do. And a former Navy SEAL talked about a secret operation to an eight-sided building beneath the ice, its walls covered with symbols not known to our culture. Join us as we explore Antarctica's hidden mysteries and creatures. Chapter 1. Alien Encounters in the Ice Antarctica is this massive icy world, almost entirely wrapped up in thick, heavy ice, making it a place that's been full of mysteries and unanswered questions for years and years. It's so remote and chilly, far away from the hustle and bustle of our everyday lives, and it's home to some of the weirdest happenings you could imagine. Imagine looking up into the sky there and seeing lights that move in ways no plane can, or walking on the ice and finding shapes and patterns that just don't seem to belong on Earth. There are also tales, ones that seem too wild to be true, about encounters with creatures from beyond our planet. It feels like Antarctica is this big box of mysteries, packed with secrets and riddles that nobody has managed to figure out completely yet. Now picture this. A story comes to you from a person who once served in the U.S. Navy. This isn't just any story. This person claims to have seen first-hand evidence of alien life right in Antarctica. They talk about spotting an entrance to a place where aliens might be living, hidden beneath the endless ice. And they even mention seeing UFOs, unidentified flying objects, zipping through the sky above the ice. This kind of tale sounds like something you'd expect to find in a book or movie about space adventures, not something you'd hear about in real life. Yet here it is, a story told by someone who was there. It makes you pause and think, pondering over the possibilities. Could there be some truth to this incredible story? And there's an even bigger question looming in the air. Is the United States government in the loop about these supposed alien activities in the cold, distant lands of Antarctica. This whole situation makes Antarctica not just a continent of ice and snow, but a centerpiece in a story that feels like it's straight out of the realm of science fiction. It's a place that challenges our understanding of the world, presenting mysteries that seem almost too strange to be part of our reality. Yet, the stories keep coming, told by people who have been there and seen things that they can't easily explain. These tales transform Antarctica from a distant frozen wilderness into a scene right out of a mystery novel, where the lines between what's real and what's imagined blur, leaving us with more questions than answers. Get ready for an extraordinary adventure that's going to show you a side of Antarctica you've never seen before. We're going to explore a fascinating tale told by someone who used to fly over this icy wilderness for the U.S. military. The things they claim to have seen during their flights might just turn everything we think we understand about this frozen, secretive world upside down. Antarctica is truly a unique place on Earth, unmatched in its extremities. It's famous for setting records in terms of how cold, dry, and windy it can get. This vast land is also incredibly large, being the fifth largest continent, spreading out over an expansive area of more than 3.2564 million square miles, all covered in a thick blanket of ice and snow. Yet, the size and the harsh conditions of Antarctica aren't the only things that make it stand out. What's even more captivating are the mysteries that might lie beneath its icy surface. The continent is steeped in stories and myths, some of which suggest that secrets are yet to be uncovered beneath the endless layers of ice and snow. These tales have been circulating for years, intriguing anyone who hears them and sparking curiosity about what truths Antarctica might be hiding. Could there be undiscovered phenomena or evidence of otherworldly visitors concealed by its frosty facade? 
These questions have puzzled adventurers, scientists, and dreamers alike, making Antarctica a place of endless wonder and speculation. It's this blend of extreme natural conditions and mysterious legends that sets Antarctica apart, inviting us to look closer and question what we know about this icy, enigmatic continent. The truth is already out there. Exploring Antarctica reveals ancient, prehistoric maps, suggesting lost ancient knowledge. Chapter 2. Ancient Map of Antarctica the mystery surrounding the early representations of Antarctica on maps is a fascinating puzzle that has intrigued people for years. One of the most astonishing examples of this is a map created in the 1500s, known as the Piri Race Map. This map showed Antarctica long before it was officially recognized by explorers in 1820. What makes this even more intriguing is that the Piri Race Map was based on even older documents, some of which date back to ancient times. This raises several thought-provoking questions. How were the ancient cartographers aware of Antarctica's existence? What could they possibly have seen or known that might still be unknown to us today? And perhaps most baffling of all, how were they able to depict the continent so accurately without any of the sophisticated tools and technology that modern map makers have at their disposal? For a long time now, the mystery of how Antarctica appeared so accurately on a map from the 1500s has captured the imaginations and puzzled the minds of both historians and scientists. The fact that the Piri Race map could depict Antarctica with such precision, long before the age of satellites, GPS, and advanced mapping technology we use today, is truly remarkable. This incredible level of detail hints at the possibility that the people of ancient times might have known things or used methods that have been forgotten over the centuries. It's as if they had a window into knowledge that has since been closed and locked away from us. On the other hand, this map raises the tantalizing possibility that there were explorations and journeys to the Antarctic region that happened way before any historical records indicate. These journeys, lost to time, could have informed map makers of lands that the rest of the world wouldn't officially recognize for hundreds of years. The ongoing debate about how exactly Antarctica ended up being mapped so accurately so long ago has sparked a wide range of theories and guesses. Some people think that the map's creators must have had access to information from a very ancient source, from a time when Antarctica might not have been covered in ice. This would mean that the map's origins trace back to a period thousands of years before the dawn of what we consider human civilization. It's a thought that stretches the imagination that there once was a time when Antarctica was ice-free and known to people of the past. Another idea that some have proposed is that there could have been sophisticated seafaring cultures capable of navigating vast distances across the oceans. These cultures, perhaps possessing advanced nautical skills and knowledge, might have reached the Antarctic shores and mapped them, all without leaving any trace in the historical record as we know it. Both of these possibilities suggest that our ancestors were far more knowledgeable and capable than we often give them credit for. They hint at lost histories and civilizations with abilities that could rival or even surpass our own. The debate continues as we try to piece together how ancient map makers managed to include such accurate representations of Antarctica on their maps, opening up endless questions about the past and the skills of those who lived in it. Whatever the truth may be, the presence of Antarctica on early maps like that of Piri Race remains one of history's most captivating enigmas. It challenges our understanding of historical timelines, the capabilities of ancient peoples, and the potential for lost knowledge from past civilizations. Traveling beyond the maps into the center of Antarctica's very cold wilderness, we face the extreme conditions of nature and the toughness of those who brave to study them. Chapter 3. Life in the Extreme Wild Ice Antarctica is a huge place, covered in ice and snow, and it's full of mysteries. One interesting fact about this big, cold continent is that not many people live there, even though it's really, really big. 
Imagine a place as big as millions of soccer fields put together, but only around 10,000 people are there at the same time. These people are usually scientists and researchers. They come to live in small houses called research stations that are spread out all over Antarctica. But they don't stay there forever. They only live there for a little while because their job is to do science experiments and learn more about this icy place. They're trying to find out all the secrets Antarctica has, like what kind of animals live there, how cold it can get, and if there's anything special hidden under all that ice. So even though Antarctica is one of the biggest places on Earth, it's not full of people. It's mostly just ice, snow, and a few scientists trying to learn as much as they can while they're there. The primary reason for such a sparse human presence is the extremely harsh and unwelcoming conditions of the environment. Antarctica is not a place where people can live comfortably. The average temperature there hovers around a freezing minus 56.2 degrees Fahrenheit, but it can drop even further to a bone-chilling minus 128.2 degrees Fahrenheit. During the coldest times, the winds in Antarctica are another force to reckon with, reaching speeds that surpass 186 miles per hour. These fierce winds, coupled with snowstorms that can last for weeks without a break, make the continent a very tough place for humans to survive. The landscape is mostly barren and lifeless, with very few signs of life apart from certain hardy species, such as some types of penguins and seals that have adapted to the extreme conditions. Covering 99% of its surface, the Antarctic ice sheet is a colossal mass of ice that is up to 2.5 miles thick in certain areas. This ice sheet holds about 90% of the world's ice, representing a significant portion of the planet's freshwater reserves. The impact of this ice melting would be catastrophic. It would lead to a rise in sea levels by about 60 meters. Such a rise would inundate numerous coastal cities and islands around the globe, causing widespread displacement and environmental challenges. The allure of Antarctica lies not only in its daunting environment, but also in the mystery and the call to adventure it represents. It draws explorers, adventurers, and scientists who are keen to probe its mysteries, to learn more about its extreme conditions, and to push the boundaries of human exploration. While some explorers have achieved remarkable feats, others have faced defeat, and there are those whose journeys ended in mystery, with them never to be seen again. This mix of triumph and tragedy, of known and unknown, makes Antarctica a place of endless fascination. Among the tales of courage and exploration, there's a particularly intriguing story involving a U.S. Navy flight engineer. This story, filled with unexpected twists and challenges, exemplifies the unpredictable nature of the continent. As we delve into this account, we find ourselves confronted with new questions and a re-evaluation of what we thought we understood about this icy realm. This encounter, chilling and mysterious, adds yet another layer to the enigma that is Antarctica, challenging our perceptions and inviting us to ponder the mysteries that lie within its icy embrace. Under huge icebergs and extreme cold, a U.S. Navy flight engineer's normal mission reveals unexplainable events, leading us into military secrets and alien mysteries. Chapter 4 Mysteries Above and Below the Earth In the chilly days of January 2015, a well-respected investigative journalist named Linda Moulton Howe found herself reading an email that was anything but ordinary. The message came from a man who had once navigated the skies as a naval flight engineer. Preferring to keep his real identity a secret, he used the name Brian to conceal his true identity. Brian's decision to stay anonymous was driven by his wish to share some incredibly eerie experiences from his days spent in the remote and icy expanse of Antarctica, where he had been stationed from the year 1983 until he decided to hang up his uniform in 1997. To lend credibility to his extraordinary tales, Brian provided Howe with his military discharge papers, known as DD-200 and 14 documents, along with various other certificates that vouched for his service. Among these was an Antarctic Service Medal, a token of recognition awarded to him on November 20, 1984. 
serving as concrete proof of his time spent in the harsh, icy wilderness of Antarctica. Brian, throughout his career as a flight engineer, had amassed over 4,000 hours in the air, soaring above the vast, icy landscape of Antarctica. He claimed his flights revealed sights that would be hard for the average person to even dream of, describing the terrain as looking more like something from another planet than our own Earth, with its stark yet mesmerizing beauty and profound mysteries. His base of operations was at McMurdo Station, a remote yet significant site nestled on the southern tip of Ross Island. McMurdo Station, the largest scientific outpost on the continent, was established by the U.S. government back in 1956. It served as a central hub for research and exploration, capable of accommodating up to 1,200 residents at its peak periods. Brian and many others like him embarked on their missions in this bustling station, contributing to our vast knowledge about this distant part of the world. Throughout his service period, Brian and his team played a crucial role in transporting supplies and carrying out rescue missions within Antarctica's formidable and icy landscapes. These operations kicked off towards the end of September and wrapped up by the end of February, marking an annual cycle that they followed until the squadron was officially disbanded in 1999. Brian's duties were primarily associated with the Antarctic Squadron Expedition missions, which involved moving personnel back and forth between various points of interest. In his detailed discussions with journalist Linda Moulton Howe, Brian initially described his experiences as rather routine, echoing the day-to-day -day expectations of someone in his position as a naval flight engineer. Yet, as time went on, he started to encounter situations that were anything but normal. One such bewildering event was the sudden vanishing of a team of researchers. These individuals had been conducting studies in the mountains close by when they inexplicably went missing. Assigned to look into this mystery, Brian, along with his team, set out in search of the researchers, but came back empty-handed, unable to find any sign of them. The only clue out of the ordinary was a strange, silver object found half-buried in the snow. This object, which appeared to be of unknown origin and purpose, added an element of mystery to the already perplexing situation. About a week following their disappearance, the missing researchers made contact with McMurdo Station, requesting to be picked up from their camp. The same crew that had initially dropped them off, now acquainted with the specific location and the landscape, was sent for the retrieval. Interestingly, upon their return, the researchers did not engage in any form of communication with Brian or his crew. They seemed extremely frightened, a stark contrast to their demeanor before their unexplained disappearance. Brian's experiences as a naval flight engineer took him across the vast, icy expanses of the Antarctic continent, where he had the opportunity to fly to the South Pole itself over 300 times. The main hub for these extensive operations was McMurdo Station, which is located about 3.5 hours of flight away from the South Pole Station. This strategic positioning allowed Brian and his team to cover significant portions of Antarctica during their annual missions. Positioned between McMurdo and the South Pole is a breathtaking natural feature, the Transantarctic Mountains, a sight to behold from the air during flights. The journeys between these two points were often accompanied by what pilots refer to as severe clear weather conditions, enabling clear visibility of the Transantarctic Mountains from the aircraft's cruising altitudes, which ranged between 25,000 and 35,000 feet above ground level. During one of the missions in the vicinity of the Transantarctic Mountains, Brian, along with his crew, encountered a sight that was as bewildering as it was unforgettable. They observed a group of silver, round objects performing aerial maneuvers that seemed to defy the laws of physics. These objects were seen moving in unison, executing precise movements from one mountain peak to another in a coordinated fashion. Brian tried to describe the bewildering scene, noting how the objects would group together at one peak, then move in synchronization to another and then to another, 
before abruptly vanishing from sight. This occurrence could not easily be brushed off as a mere illusion or a trick of the mind, especially since it was not only Brian who saw them. The presence of multiple witnesses to this event made it impossible to dismiss as a simple hallucination. What made these observations even more intriguing was Brian's admission that such sightings were not a one-off event. Rather, they were part of a series of unexplained phenomena that he and his crew had encountered repeatedly. This pattern of sightings introduces a host of questions about the nature of these mysterious objects. Were they some form of advanced aircraft, or could they possibly be evidence of extraterrestrial technology? Brian's discussions with Howe revealed a narrative filled with such anomalies, suggesting that his experiences in Antarctica went far beyond the routine operations of a flight engineer. Each of these mysterious incidents added pieces to an intricate puzzle, suggesting that there was more to the frozen continent than met the eye, hinting at secrets that could challenge our understanding of the world. Stepping into the off-limits, we find a secret anomaly in Antarctica's ice, hinting at mysteries protected by forces we don't fully understand. Chapter 5. The Hidden Cave with Forbidden Truths in a place far away, there was a very special area known as the Forbidden Zone, which was famous for its mysterious and strange appearance. This story begins with a person named Brian, who was chosen to go on a very important mission to help someone in trouble. This mission seemed like the kind of task Brian had done many times before, but this time, things were very different. Brian had to go through a place where people were usually not allowed to fly. This area was known as a no-fly zone, and it was a rule that nobody was supposed to break. Despite this, because there were people who needed help urgently, and there wasn't much time, the decision was made to go ahead with the mission. As Brian set out on this mission to save people, he didn't know that he was about to experience something very unusual and a bit scary. When he flew into the area where he wasn't supposed to go, he saw a huge opening to a cave. This wasn't just any cave. It was massive and went down into the ice at an angle. Brian thought that the opening was at least 200 feet wide. Just looking at this enormous cave opening would make anyone feel a bit nervous, especially with the cold wind blowing around them in this icy place. But what happened next was even more frightening. Suddenly, all the equipment that Brian and his team were using stopped working. It was as if the cave had some sort of power that could make everything stop. After they managed to finish their mission and help the people they were supposed to, Brian and his team went back to their base. When they got there, they saw something they didn't expect. There were some men waiting for them, and these men were very different from the people they usually saw around. These men were wearing suits and looked like they had come from a long way away probably from Washington, D.C. It was unusual to see people like this in a place as remote as McMurdo, which is a long distance from the fancy offices these men were likely used to. The reason why these suited men were there became clear very quickly. They talked to Brian and his team in a very serious way. They told them that they should never fly over that mysterious cave again and that they should not tell anyone about what they saw. This warning made the cold feel even colder, as it was a reminder of how serious and strange the situation was. Despite the efforts to keep the eyewitnesses quiet, the big secret about a massive hole in the ice of Antarctica couldn't just be forgotten. Brian had seen something incredible, and he thought this hole might be a door to something extraordinary. He wondered, could this be a path to a hidden place where aliens live? a place that the U.S. government didn't want anyone to know about. Many people think of Antarctica as just a huge, lifeless block of ice where nothing could survive. But scientists have found some really interesting things that challenge that idea. They found a spot under the ice that's actually warm and could be a good place for living things to thrive, right near a place called Mount Erebus, which is a volcano. This volcano heats up a bunch of ice caves around it, making some spots inside them as warm as 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty warm. 
especially for a place as cold as Antarctica. Researchers, including some smart folks from the Australian National University, did some detective work in these caves. They found DNA from plants like algae and moss, and even from small creatures. This discovery makes them think that these warm spots could be home to types of life that are completely different from what we see elsewhere, almost like they're from another world. When Brian talked about seeing things flying in the sky that no one could identify, and other weird stuff happening around this 200-foot wide hole, it made people think more about the possibility of aliens being out there. The fact that Brian and his team were told very firmly to not talk about what they found makes the whole thing even more mysterious. If this hole was just a regular part of the icy landscape, why would the people in charge want to keep it a secret so badly? This situation raises a lot of questions about what's really going on in that remote, icy world. Through history's quiet halls, explorer and whistleblower stories come together, showing a pattern of hiding and a big truth too complex to fully know. Chapter 6 the Government Invisible Hand Brian's journey isn't a solitary tale. His experiences share similarities with those of another celebrated explorer of the cold, distant places of the Earth, Admiral Richard Byrd. Byrd is well known for his daring adventure to the South Pole in the year 1947. During this incredible journey, he made a groundbreaking discovery, a massive opening that led to a hidden world beneath the Earth. This discovery by Byrd, who was one of the most skilled and honored pilots in the United States military, created a massive stir across the globe. Admiral Richard Byrd was a naval officer with a long list of achievements in exploration. One of his most notable discoveries was Mount Sidley, the biggest dormant volcano in the icy continent of Antarctica. However, when he reported finding a huge entrance at the South Pole, that seemed to be alive with different kinds of unknown life forms, people were left in disbelief. This announcement was so profound that it had the potential to change our entire understanding of life and where it can exist. The fact that Byrd made this announcement while the icy wilderness of Antarctica still surrounded him and the intense questioning he faced from the government when he got back to the United States makes the story even more fascinating. Right after he shared his discovery, the government tried to keep it quiet, casting doubts on Byrd's credibility by suggesting he was someone who could make up such stories. Many believe that when Byrd returned to America, the government took him in for intense questioning about what he said he found. They supposedly told him to keep quiet about the underground world he discovered. This leads to the question, why would the government want to keep such an extraordinary discovery a secret? Ignoring Byrd's claims without further investigation opens up a lot of speculative and complex questions about what the government's motives might be. It's worth thinking about why the government would want to hide the existence of an underground world in Antarctica. Could it be because acknowledging such a discovery would bring about too many questions they weren't ready to answer? Or perhaps it was a matter of national security? The reasons behind their desire to suppress Byrd's findings are a topic of much debate and speculation. One reason behind keeping such secrets could be related to the safety and security of a nation. Imagine if what Bird had said was actually true. This would mean there's a whole secret world or hidden land out there that we didn't know about. Finding out about a place like this could be seen as either a danger or a chance for the United States and other countries. This is because Depending on what the people living in this secret underground place want or plan to do, it could mean different things for the rest of the world. The leaders of a country might decide to not tell anyone about this discovery. They could be worried about starting a fight or having to compete with other countries. Or they might want to quietly check out this hidden place and use whatever resources or advanced technology they find for their own country's gain. There's a theory that Byrd's journey to this unknown land was not just a simple exploration. Instead, it was part of a top-secret military mission called Operation High Jump. The goal of this mission was to set up a base for the United States in Antarctica and to look into any secret activities that the Nazis might have been up to there. 
Another reason for keeping things under wraps could be because of money and what can be gained from it. Antarctica is known for being incredibly large and full of resources, and there has been a lot of arguing over who it belongs to. In 1959, an agreement called the Antarctic Treaty System was made. This agreement said that Antarctica should be a place where countries work together in peace and that no military or business ventures should happen there. Despite this, the possibility of getting to the oil, gas, minerals, and fish that are in Antarctica has caught the attention of some countries. If what Bird had discovered was real, it could mean there's a huge untouched part of Antarctica that's just full of valuable things or chances to build and grow. Governments might want to keep such discoveries a secret to avoid tricky legal or moral problems or to make sure they are the first to get their hands on and control this secret underground area. A third reason for keeping certain discoveries quiet could be all about what people think and feel. Bird was not just any explorer. He was famous and looked up to by many. When he talked about finding an underground world in Antarctica, it was a big deal that got a lot of people talking. This kind of news could really change how people see the world of exploration, science, and even the government itself. If the government decided to keep Bird's discovery a secret, it could be because they didn't want to cause a big fuss. They might have been worried about people getting upset, confused, or too curious. Keeping things quiet was also a way to make sure that people kept trusting and respecting the government's decisions. Some people think that Byrd might have made the whole thing up for attention or as a trick, and they suggest that the government might have helped hide the truth or even spread wrong information on purpose. A fourth reason has to do with the trustworthiness of science. What Byrd said he found was hard to believe according to what we already know about the Earth, its rocks, and living things. If people started believing in something that seemed so unlikely, it could make scientists look bad or lead people to doubt important scientific discoveries. Some experts have said Bird was mistaken because of errors in navigation, lack of real proof, or because his claims just don't fit with the basic rules of how the Earth works. But the stories told by Brian and Bird about Antarctica are full of unanswered questions. Brian's story, which came out much later, seems to back up what Bird had said long before. Yet, when both men tried to tell others about what they saw, it seemed like no one in charge wanted to listen. This makes you wonder if there might be things about the cold, distant lands of Antarctica that are kept secret on purpose. What do you think about what Brian said? What do you think about the U.S. Navy saying there are aliens in Antarctica? Does this change how you see Earth's secrets? What else might be hidden in Antarctica's ice? Share your opinions below. Like and subscribe for more.